hype machine. Don't believe the hype machine. We provide survival news for you. Don't believe the hype machine. Death of the journalist. To help you overcome any fear of the future. Don't believe the, don't believe the, don't believe the, don't believe the. Friday, April 18th, 1930, BBC Radio. Hey everyone, welcome to Barncat Media. This is a show where I talk about books, films, and events of the past and present through the lens of cultural and media theory. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about heroes and celebrities, and what the difference is and what the difference says about American culture. I'm also going to be talking about how social media has exacerbated this phenomenon of heroes and celebrities in the 21st century. Now I'm going to begin by just briefly discussing a concept by the late social theorist Daniel Borstein. Um, so in the 60s, Daniel Borstein wrote a book called The Image, A Guide to Pseudo-Events in America. And in this book, uh, he comes up with this notion of the pseudo-event, and he explains the pseudo-event pseudo as being this contrived, artificial occurrence that simulates reality and is created with the intent of being reproduced through media apparatuses. Now I'm just going to give a few examples of pseudo-events. The most obvious one being advertisements, in which the public is presented with a prepackaged image of a company or product. The advertisement, just like other pseudo-events, is intended to be a self-fulfilling prophecy, in which it attains the qualities it claims to possess merely by claiming to possess such qualities. Um, vacations are another example of a pseudo-event, in which a, a travel agency creates within the viewer preconceptions about a destination so that the public experiences those places not so much as a traveler encountering the uncertainties of a foreign country, but rather as a tourist who expects desirable things to happen to them just as they have been described. Um, one final example of a pseudo-event that's more relevant to what's been dominating the media these last few months are presidential debates. So the whole experience is packaged for us as we are told by experts what to expect from the candidates leading up to the debates. After the debates, these same experts interpret the candidates' remarks for us. The whole event is governed and confined by the mandates of televisual conventions. Um, so for example, the length of candidates' responses are limited by the need for commercial breaks. The candidates' appearances, which gets manipulated by lighting, makeup, framing, and editing, is given equal, if not more, consideration than the actual content of their statements. So in our exposure to these people running for public office, the mandates of media leave very little for an unadulterated experience of these people. So those are a few examples of what Borstein means by a pseudo-event. And uh, the rise of pseudo-events really began with the newspaper industry, uh, in which for the first time, uh, events about the world were presented to the public in this prepackaged form that was dictated by uh, the medium in which they were being expressed. But the pseudo-event really took on new heights um, during the 19th century during what Borstein calls the graphical revolution. And this refers to the rise of technologies like lithography, photography, cinema, billboards, television, etc. Um, which gave us the ability to mass produce the image. And Borstein argues that these images have come to be accepted as reality. So our image of a company is shaped by the commercial they've made. Our expectations of a destination is shaped by the uh, travel industry. Our opinion of a public figure is that which the media has prepackaged for us. And with the graphical revolution, American culture underwent a pretty significant change in which, for the first time in history, fame became something that could be manufactured. And this ability to mass produce famousness is what has facilitated the replacement of the hero with the celebrity. The celebrity is the human pseudo-event, and Borstein makes a distinction between the hero and the celebrity by describing the hero as somebody who stands out among others for their greatness, while the celebrity is publicity masquerading as greatness. The hero is the embodiment of virtues. The celebrity is the product offered up to satisfy our demand to be entertained. Uh, the hero created himself through his actions. The celebrity was created by the media and requires a publicity agent to keep them in the public eye. The hero is made through folklore and history. The celebrity is the product of gossip and public opinion. While the passage of time cements the hero's place in our culture and history, the passage of time renders the celebrity irrelevant and forgotten. Now, in this distinction that Borstein makes between heroes and celebrities, uh, it's important to understand what he is not saying. 
He is not saying that the celebrities of today are merely ordinary people who are being propped up by the media. While that may be true of some celebrities, not just anybody can do what famous people have done. But in making a distinction between the celebrities of today and the heroes of yesterday, Borstein is also drawing a distinction between the public before the graphical revolution and the public after the graphical revolution. And he refers to the former as the folk and the latter as the mass. And just as the public is being uh, delivered these prepackaged celebrities by the media, uh, the people of today who actually are heroes by definition are forced into stardom by the very media landscape in which they exist. And one fairly recent example of this is with Captain Chesley Sullenberger, who you may recall is the pilot who uh, safely landed his plane in the Hudson River, saving the lives of his passengers as his plane was going down. Now what followed after this amazing display of heroics was not the creation of a hero, but rather the creation of a celebrity. There was a blitzkrieg of media appearances as Solenberger appeared on talk shows, in magazine articles, radio shows, he even came out with a book telling a story, and so Captain Solenberger the man became Captain Solenberger the pseudo-event. By which I mean the public's exposure to Captain Solenberger had become synthetic in the sense that it was all planned for the purpose of reinforcing this certain image of himself and also for the purpose of being reproduced through media. And so what results is a proliferation of Solenberger's name and image. And Solenberger's fame, just like that of most other celebrities, diminished with time. And that is because Solenberger is no longer an interesting story. That's not to say that his actions were uninteresting because not just anybody lands a plane in the Hudson River, but Solenberger is no longer of any use to the media because he can no longer be used to satisfy the demands of the public to be entertained. He can no longer be offered up as a celebrity that the public expects to be delivered. And this is why people like Paris Hilton, who have really done nothing exceptional in their lives, are able to remain celebrities while the heroes like Solenberger are not. Paris Hilton thrives in her ability to continually generate publicity and remain in the public eye. She is useful to the media because of her ability to remain a pseudo-event. The Paris Hilton camp have made no comments, and last we checked, the only thing she was tweeting about was partying. And so this shift from hero to celebrity and the consequent shift that it's brought about in American culture has really been exacerbated by social media. And this is something that Daniel Borstein could not have foreseen since he wrote this book back in the 60s. And so what sites like Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare, and so forth have done is really two things. Um, first of all is they've dramatically expanded the tools and environment in which stardom can be created. By subscribing to a celebrity's uh, news feed or friends list, you turn yourself into a spectator of the every thought that this celebrity decides to make public about themselves. So it is no longer just the pseudo-event that uses media to seek you, it is now you that is using media to seek the pseudo-event. And in doing so, you help to create that pseudo-event. And secondly, these same tools and environments make it possible to turn ourselves into celebrities. Just as social media expands the scope of stardom for famous people, it allows ordinary people to pose as celebrities. Professor Barry Vacker, who has also spoken on this topic, uh, explains this uh, by saying that Facebook allows you to become your own paparazzi in which you can document and celebrate every triviality of your life. Now it is not my intention to lambaste social media as being merely a device for idol worship and self-indulgence. Obviously social media has a lot of positive applications and how it's revolutionized communications. Um, but we can't ignore the fact that social media is widely used for self-promotion. It gives amateurs the opportunity to mimic the celebrity system by which fame is synonymous with publicity. Your Facebook profile or Twitter feed is your own personal tabloid in which you are both the subject matter and editor-in-chief. Your friends list or your Twitter feed is the audience to which you're delivering content about yourself to. And so as the image of ourselves is manipulated as we see fit, we then turn ourselves into pseudo-events.
more and more of our everyday experience happens for pseudo-event reasons. Uh, for example, uh, we take photos with the intent of posting it and thus reproducing it online. Um, when we have a thought that strikes us as particularly clever or newsworthy, we post it to our online profiles. And so more and more of the public's exposure to us has become synthetic in the sense that it is planned. The more an image of ourselves gets shared in cyberspace, the more friends and followers we have, the more of a celebrity we become. So famousness then becomes this tautology. Unlike the hero who is well known for the virtues they've displayed, today's celebrity is well known for the fact that they are well known. So that's it for today's episode. Um, I'm going to end on a kind of ironic note by doing a little self-promotion of my own. Um, all episodes of Barncat Media can be found on my YouTube channel, Barncat Media. So go there if you want to check out past episodes. And I will see you next time. I'm a